Hello and good evening, this is uh, Ruth Pozuelo from Curval.com and uh, today we're going to talk about relationships. But don't worry, we're not going to talk about mine, we're going to talk about Power BI's uh, relationships. So if you have been uh, working with Power BI for a while, I'm sure you've already done some relationships or you let Power BI do some relationships for you. But in this video, we are actually going to do a deep dive on relationships and uh, what the, all the options are, how they work and how you can avoid some issues that may come if you configure the relationships wrong. So without any more delay, let's uh, start. Okay, so here we have our demo file. We will go through it in a second, but we have two tables. We have a manufacturing table and we have a product data uh, lookup table. Lookup table, what it means is that data is fairly stable. It doesn't change by day. So you have it, uh, for example, a product table. Unless you create a new product, it will stay the same through time. And uh, the reason for creating relations is between these two is that you can actually use data from here to analyze data in the manufacturing table. And you could, of course, merge the tables together, but if you do that, you will have a performance, you will get performance problems if your data is big. So let's see what happens first when you don't have relationships. I'm sure you've seen this case before. So let's, for example, have create a table with a product name from the manufacturing table. No, sorry, we get product name from the product table, our um, lookup table, and then we get uh, amount from the manufacturing table. Let's do it a little bit bigger so we see something. So what's happening here? Um, as you can see, it's giving us exactly the same amount on all rows. And what basically is happening is that Power BI does not know how these two tables relate together. So it just gives you the total amount on every row. It's as simple as that. So to create a relationship, you have a few options. If you are new, you can actually go here to the home tab and manage relationships and use the auto detect. And the reason I recommend this is that most of the times Power BI gets it right by itself. So you don't have to worry about it. So you see, found a new relationship. It defines it by itself. We close and we get the right results right away. If we go back to our relationships um, view, you can see that it created a relationship. Another way to do it is you remove that and then you say, okay, I know that product ID and product ID is the row that is in both tables. And I know that these have the unique product ID values, otherwise you won't be able to, to create the relationship. So you can just drag and drop. And again, Power BI will create the, um, the relationship for you. Uh, most of the times Power BI will actually pick the right column, right? Um, if we double click on it, we could actually change some of the parameters. We're going to go through the parameters later, don't worry. But here we can see that it just chose something for us. So let's look at these um, options down here. Uh, if we start with the cardinality, it is a drop down box and you have one to one, one to many and many to one. So if we go to our tables, this is our product table and we have unique values for the product ID. We can see it better on product name, but the manufacturing table is giving us uh, the number of products manufactured in a special day. So of course the product products will repeat on this table. So in this case, as 
Power BI correctly identified, we have a many to one relationship. Okay. One to many is in the other way, and one to one is when we have unique values here and unique values there. So this is the easy part, really. And Power BI will do an excellent job picking up which cardinality to use. Most of the times, uh, the only problem it could be that it chose the, road, the wrong uh, column, which normally doesn't do it, actually. I've never had that problem. Um, so now we move on to cross filtering direction. We have both and single. Okay. As you can see here, you see the two arrows pointing on both directions. If we double click, Power BI so set that relationship to both. The easiest way to explain this is if we set it first to single and see what happens. So we're going to do that. We're going to set the direction to single. And of course, it will go from one to the many. And now let's do a simple experiment. When the direction has been set to single with between two tables, it will work absolutely perfect. So what we need to do is to bring another table here, which I already have here in edit queries. We're going to load the employee table. Let's do that, enable load. So here we have it. So we have here our employees and here we have our employees ID. We can look at the tables again. So here we have employee ID and here we have uh, our employee ID. And what we want to do is we want to connect these two. You have again a few choices to do it. Either you use, we can test the auto detect. No new relationships. Okay, let's do it manually. So you will set it as both, but we want to have it as single just for the purpose of this demonstration to understand how these uh, filtering flows through the tables. So what we're going to do now, we're going to create a table that has material from the product table. It has the product name from the manufacturing table and the employee name from the employee table. Okay. So let's do that. We get from the manufacturing table, the product name. We get from the product table, material and then from the employee employee name so we want to basically know which products are manufactured by who and what materials they are allowed to work with so as long as you are not filtering anything on any of the tables the relationship will work and that is the tricky part because that's what sometimes tricks you to believe that you have a correct relationship set up but what happens if we would like to have, if we would like to know, for example, which, how many employees can work with a specific material. So what we want to do is we want to go from this table to this table and filter. Okay. So put this aside. We want to have a simple measure count employees, count employee name. And now we are going to get material from the product and we're going to get count employees from the employee table. And look what happens. It happens exactly the same that happens in the beginning when we didn't have any relationships set up. But we do have it, so that could be a little bit confusing. And if you are importing a model from Power Pivot in Excel 2013 or earlier, all the relationships will be set to single. And the reason why I believe is because they didn't have uh, the multi-direction um, feature yet. 
So you have to be aware of that if you are importing models from Excel 2013 or earlier, that you might have to go back to the relationships uh, view and change the filters. So what's happening? What we are asking is to, with the materials, get how many employees and the filter is flowing and then it, it you know the arrows indicates how the data if you would say flows through the tables so you can go through here but then there is no arrow on this table so it cannot actually cross so basically it's like if it was there is no relation and that would be the other way around so the employee filters will flow to the manufacturing table, but it cannot flow to the product table. So if we change these to both, suddenly the data can flow back and forth. And let's see what happens. We get the correct filtering. Okay. So that would be the difference between single, um, both, um, filtering directions. So now you might be wondering, okay, but then it's easy. I can just set all the relationships to both and then everything will work. Well, not quite. And for demonstrating that I need to load a few more tables. So let's do that first. We're going to load uh, this one, the region table and the geographical table. So region, and here we have the other one. And wait, we're going to load also, I don't know why I didn't do it, the stock table. So make sure that everything loaded correctly. Here we have them. So now let's see how these relate to each other. We have our lookup table for products and we have a stock table. This tells us which products are in stock. And we are going to connect these two together. Now the stock table has locations and we have that stock location on another table that connects with a continent. I will show you the data and we have a table that connects continent with country and we have employees with countries. So we want to get that too. Now look what happens here. We're going to talk about it in just a second, but let me show you the table. So here we have the employee table with country ID. Country ID looks like this. It's a country and then we have the continent and then we have for that a table with continent and stock location. And our stock table looks like this with product names and product IDs that connect to our product table. It is a little bit complicated, but you're going to be able to download the file. So don't worry, you will be able to look at this in, in more detail. So what happened here? As you can see, this relationship was set as inactive. Why did Power BI do that? Okay, so let's say that we want to know which products are, I don't know, deliver from which country. So we want to pick up something from here to here. And now we have set um, both um, cross filtering. So you can say, okay, I should be able to get an answer, right? Well, you really cannot because Power BI does not know which way it should go. Should we go this way? Or should it go that way? And if you don't do the relationships automatically, what it will do is it will set these as inactive. So that is a way for Power BI to resolve the conflict, but that might not be the correct way. Perhaps this is the one that should be inactive. 
So if you have that kind of table relationships, you will have to set one of them at least as inactive. Another thing you can do to avoid these problems, so every time you have like a circular relationship, it won't work. You could actually go back to edit queries. You can duplicate the table back to your relationships and disconnect this. And then you connect country ID with country ID. As you can see, once I have the relationship as they call now it's not it's not looking like a star, but you know the, the this the star diagrams they don't have circular relationships. They are more like let me show you. So this is the relationship, uh, the, the, the forum that you you have to use in order to be able to have cross filtering set as both. Okay, so there is no question about where Power BI should, how the, the, the data should flow, or the filtering should flow from table to table. So if you have a circular uh, relationship like I show you, then you won't be able to, to, to set the relationship as both. So here you have it also. Okay, so you have a fact table and then you have lookup tables all over. So one last thing um, before we wrap up, uh, there is in options. Hmm. Data load. Here you have some settings for relationships. Here you allow Power BI if you are importing data from a source that has relationships, you Power BI will copy those relationships for you, so you don't have to create them. Or Power BI doesn't need to guess what the relationships are. Um, you can have this also check update relationships when refreshing queries. If you know that your data model is going to change and for example one-to-one -one relationships will become one-to-many, then you can have actually Power BI check them out and update them for you. I had some issues with that before so that's why I deleted it I unchecked it. I, I will check it back to see how it does now. And then you can have this, uh, the ability to auto detect new relationships after you loaded the data. Okay. So this is all for today. Uh, on Wednesday, we are going to talk about many to many relationships where you don't have unique values on any of the tables. So make sure you don't miss it. And uh, well, this is all for today. Um, I hope you liked the video. In that case, please let me know. I am always grateful for your feedback. Um, if you have any questions, comments or suggestions, let me know in the comment box or any of the social channels listed below. And subscribe, I publish uh, Power BI videos weekly on uh, DAX relationships. Not mine again. Um, yeah. Have a great evening. Bye.